Hey everybody, welcome back to PT Talks. And in this episode, we just have one topic to discuss, but it's a big one. Mm. It's the new Kia Stinger. Yeah, it, a lot of people never thought it would happen, but it has, and it's finally here in Malaysia with a price of 240,000 ringgit for the base two liter model and a whopping 310,000 ringgit for the Stinger GT. Yeah, we'll discuss the pricing next, but mm. for now, um, it's not the most expensive Korean model on sale in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. We, of course, had the Hyundai Genesis around um, three years ago. Yeah. That went for 390,000 ringgit. Yes. But of course, it didn't do so well, so now it's already out of production. production. Yeah, at least in Malaysia. Back to the Stinger though. Mm -hmm. The 2 liter is priced at 240,000 ringgit. And that puts it right in the middle of the BMW 3 Series, Mercedes-Benz C-Class mm -hmm. range. Yes, and if you want a more left field option, you've got the Audi A4 or even more left field, the Infiniti Q50. Yeah. Yeah. And um, moving up a notch, there's Beyond the that, yes. Kia Stinger GT. 310,000 ringgit. <laughs> yeah, and that's even more than, uh, than all the mainstream C-Classes and 3 Series models. Yeah, so you're um, going to be talking about comparing against the AMG C43, for example, which is about 400,000 ringgit or 75,000 ringgit more than uh, the Stinger GT. Now, that represents about a 20% price difference, mm -hmm. which is not very substantial. So it's going to be difficult to persuade people to buy the Kia instead of the... Uh, Mercedes-Benz. Yeah, and these two are quite similar in terms of power output. They both mm. have over 3 litre V6 twin turbo mm. engines with 365 horsepower around there, yeah. over 500 Nm of torque. Yeah. They both get from 0 to 100 in under 5 seconds. Yeah. So yeah, pretty rapid and uh, first of its kind from Kia in fact. Um, the engineering department led by Albert Biermann, some of you might know him from BMW M. He's now engineering all the performance cars in uh, Kia and the Hyundai range. Mm -hmm. Right? So, interesting stuff. So yeah, it does have proper performance credentials. Yeah. This was developed at the Nürburgring. Mm. There's a bespoke rear-wheel drive platform, brand new engine. Mechanical, limited mechanical, slip differential yeah. with torque vectoring. Yeah, so, that's all standard. Yeah. And the GT even has Brembo brakes all, all around. All around with adjustable suspension. Yeah. So uh, it all is very, very impressive. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the issue here is the pricing. It's, mm. it's, it's a little bit too close to the C43. Okay. Yeah. Because at the moment, the C43 is locally assembled, so yes. it's priced quite a fair bit below the 400,000 mark. That's true. In CBU form, it was 500. Mm -hmm. Which and would if it was yeah, 310 versus 500, then yeah, that's a bit a of a no-brainer. No -brainer. Yeah. Yeah, you go for the Kia. In Australia, it's priced about the same as well. $100,000 uh, for the C43 and $60,000 for the Kia Stinger GT. So a healthy 40% margin there. So I, I think a lot of people would think, like you said, a little bit of a no-brainer when they want a rear-wheel drive performance yeah. uh, car. As it is with the C43 AMG being locally assembled, being mm. CKD, mm. the difference is... Yeah, 20%. 20%. So, <laughs> is that enough for you to consider? I uh, don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. I mean, you drive a C300. What, what do you think? Would you consider buying the Stinger GT over the... Yeah. It's about the same price. Yeah, 310. If, if the Stinger was available back then, but when I got mm -hmm. in the car two years ago, mm -hmm. I would have thought about it at least. Mm -hmm. Because this is a lot more powerful. Uh -huh. And it's six cylinders instead of a four cylinder. That's a big bonus. It yeah, looks better. Yeah. Okay. I mean, not in the traditional sense, but yeah. it, it would turn more hits than a regular three series or C class, I think. This That's Kia true. Stinger. Oh, I also remember um, yesterday at the launch, there was a poster that read something uh, that, that quoted Jeremy Clarkson. Uh, let me yeah. read it out to you guys. He said, if you were in the market for a BMW M3 or a fast Audi or a Mercedes AMG, it's certain you'd be better off with the Kia. So, that was what's in the poster, but what they did not include is mm. what came right after that. He said, right after saying the, the really bold statement before, but of course, you wouldn't dream of doing such a thing. A, a Kia, what the hell would the neighbours think? I wouldn't want to buy one either. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's Jeremy Clarkson, of course, he's uh, known to say such uh, bold Things. Yeah, but in this part, it's not a, such a ridiculous claim yeah. because if everybody bought a car based on specs, then we would see a bunch of Kias, Peugeots and Volvos mm, all over Malaysian roads. That's true. But obviously that's not the case, mm -hmm. right? Brand image, 
um, resale value, all that still hold, you know, it's still an actual thing that you have to think about before yeah, you buy a car. That's true. Yeah. And uh, in terms of brand image, mm -hmm. I think it's safe to rate uh, Kia as a company very similarly to Honda, yeah. uh, Toyota, Mitsubishi and all that. Definitely, and yeah. At this even, point, it's, it's no longer a, a, a budget brand. True. Yeah. Yeah, but to compare it against uh, premium brands could be a little bit of a, spre uh, of a stretch. That's uh, the thing. For, yeah, yeah, if you, you, you ask me whether I would spend the same amount of money on a Kia instead of mm -hmm. a Mercedes-Benz, mm -hmm. I think I would think about it mm -hmm. because you do get a lot of extra things. Yeah. Yeah. The Stinger especially has Napa leather. It has LSD. Yeah. It yeah. has Brembo brakes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything sounds cool. Yeah, color HUD things that even the Mercedes do not offer. Yeah. So, so I think it actually would boil down to test driving it. Yeah, I right? would have to see mm. just just how good this mm. BMW mm. M developed mm. Kia is. Yeah. What about you though? You drive a Kia yourself. What do you yeah. think of this thing? Uh, okay. To be really honest with you guys, I think. Uh, I would really have to think long and hard choosing the Stinger GT over, say, the C43. Um, in terms of pricing, I'm not so much worried about uh, 300 and the, the 310,000 ringgit price tag because I expected the car to be priced at that range considering mm. all the hardwares and uh, the performance okay. aspects of the car. I would have thought it would have gone lower, maybe mm -hmm. 280, mm -hmm. 290 mm -hmm. at most. Yeah, yeah. But, but this is me taking into all the accounts. So maybe I estimated it to be on the higher side, but you know, this is even without GST or SST, mm -hmm. so it could go even higher. The thing is, this is uncharted territory for Kia. Never have they made something like this, a beast of a car, a GT with a rear wheel drive. It's never been done before. So considering all the performance aspects, you're going to need to develop a, a really a competent, uh, or a really good skilled technicians, you know, to be able to attend to this car in the after sales department. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that uh, uh, Kia as a brand is unreliable in this part of the world because it's not. I drive a 2011 Kia Forte myself, the facelift version with the six-speed auto, and that has served me absolutely well for the past seven years. Yeah. No problems whatsoever. In terms of servicing after sales? Yeah, perfect. Perfectly fine. I always send it to uh, the PJ Rate Cube. So uh, in terms of um, customer care and the, the speed of service, they've never taken more than two hours to attend to my car. <laughs> that, that really says something, you know? That, that's more than I can say about Mercedes-Benz service <laughs> in Malaysia. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe it's a bit more complicated for you. Maybe yeah. the Stinger GT will be a little bit more complicated in that sense too. But like I said, you'll need a more skilled set of uh, technicians. And so yeah, I mean, as a whole, I think the Kia does offer more um, from a car's perspective mm. compared to a comparable Mercedes-Benz. Yeah. But thinking, buying a Kia over a Mercedes-Benz a bit of a stretch maybe? Yeah, maybe a bit of a stretch. Uh, like yeah. I said, it really is uncharted waters for Kia. So we'll really have to test drive it to, to, to really be sure. But I have to say, uh, one thing Kia has uh, excelled in the past few years, in fact, is with the specking and the safety, uh, sa safety equipment with their cars. For example, my car, uh, it's seven years old now, it has six airbags as standard. Yeah, and, and that was a time when Everybody, everybody had two airbags and you know, that was all right. Yeah. Everybody thought that was fine. That's true. Yeah. And now um, we've gone past airbags, we've gone past ESP. Mm -hmm. Our next big thing that we try to push is autonomous emergency braking. And for, for some whatever reason. reason, the Kia Stinger does not have AEB. Yeah. Which is weird. I mean, the, there's the Kia Picanto which is going to come up with the X line and the GT line soon. Mm -hmm. These are going to be sixty thousand dollar cars, but they both have AEB as standard. Yeah, and it's their entry level model with AEB. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you justify having a G, uh, a Kia Stinger that's two hundred forty thousand and three hundred ten thousand ringgit without AEB? It's kind of a uh, kind of a I don't know a little bit of a problem there. I think. Uh, let's just be honest here. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. But a good example would be in Australia. Would you care to explain the situation then? Yeah, Kia Australia did the same thing. They launched the, the whole Kia Stinger range mm. with, without AEB for the base models. Uh, the top spec models had AEB obviously, but the base models did not have AEB mm. and everybody, the consumers, the government bodies, they called Kia out for it. They, it made the news and um, Australian ANCAP, ANCAP gave it three stars instead of a full five star just because it did not have active safety features like AEB. Yeah, following that public uh, yeah. lash out. And because day. of that, specifically because of that, Kia 
had to revise the entire lineup to include AEB as standard. So now, whatever model you buy in the Stinger lineup, you get AEB in Australia. Yeah. And I think that's, that's something that could be done here as well. That's actually how it should be done here too. Yeah. But having said that, it's not just Kia that's guilty of all this. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Range Rover isn't doing it. AEB is not standard on the Vela. It's not, it's not standard on the BMW X3. In fact, uh, Audi, not all of their cars come with a, a, AEB here. Yeah, and yeah. in fact, it's only very few brands uh, like Mercedes-Benz and Volvo that are offering yeah. AEB in most of their of their models. Yeah, so we're not singling out just Kia because all the other brands, even the premium ones, don't do it as well. So yeah, even if you're buying all those premium brands, mm. it's your right to ask for, for active safety features. Yeah. Just let them know that you're, you're looking for these things. Maybe they'll think twice before dropping all these things in yeah. the future. I mean, yeah. even more mass market brands like Honda mm. are starting to offer this. That's true. Most Mazda of too. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, so it's, it makes no sense for premium brands to not offer these. Mm -hmm. A little bit un unacceptable to me. Yeah. yeah, maybe we should start like a... I don't know, like a hashtag Malaysian Lives Matter, for example. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe not go that far, but uh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah get, you, know, you get what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So the point maybe is to to make your make our voices heard. You know, so let this just just comment below here, uh, wherever other forums that you're on, especially on our website. Just just put your thoughts down there and say that hey, uh, we really value safety aspect. And it's one of the highest priorities we take into consideration before buying a car, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Just comment so, yeah. below. Just let your voices be heard. Hopefully, the car companies, maybe even the, the, our government agencies, will take notice yes. and yes. maybe things will change in Malaysia. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let us know what you think about this whole safety, active safety issue. Whether you think it's necessary or yeah. not, let us know why. And of course, of course, back to the Kia Stinger. Do yeah. you think it's a good buy? Would you buy this over a Mercedes Benz, or, or would you consider a Kia if you're looking at a Mercedes Benz? Either or, way, yeah, or maybe a Civic Type R since they're priced so closely together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And speaking of the Kia Stinger, maybe we can, maybe we'll be fortunate enough to secure one for one of our future driven episodes, and maybe you can let us know what you want us to compare it with or against. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, that's about it for mm -hmm. this episode of PT Talks. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. Thank you. See you in the next one.